galaxy. Good to see everyone. I hope everyone's ready for this. I'm just going to adjust my lighting and my videoing. I've done this fancy thing which I think might fall off. Hold on, technical difficulties. So I've done this thing so hopefully I'll be the right way round. Bear with me, hold on. Oh, what a nightmare. There we go. So hopefully I'm the right way round and I can see you online as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So give me a thumbs up if you can hear me, if you're happy and you know it. Clap your hands. I've got you here, I've got you here. We're gonna do some great stuff on technique tips for the lower strings, because they're the best, obviously. And we're just gonna start with our instruments, but we will need our instruments in a minute, okay? Uh, cellists and bass players, have your instrument in the sidelines waiting to be played because we're going to cover some technical aspects throughout the next half hour and towards the end of this half hour i want you to hit me up with some questions nice to easy ones please nothing about the meaning of life although i'll have a go i'll try and answer that okay so we're just going to start off with some simple movements to get us feeling warmed up and we're just going to start by moving our feet just marching on the spot right left bass is cool right left bass is cool now i just want you to have your feet kind of slowing and they're gonna just be bopping on the floor but kind of still because we're gonna get ready to sit down in a minute so our feet are now pretty much grounded but our knees are still bopping a bit but our hip is feeling kind of loose. Breathe in. If the neighbours could see me now, they'd be like that. That Alice Kent down in London, she's got some dance moves. Gonna add some dance moves. So it's gonna be a night fever. Dance moves. Get her arms limbered up, keep the hips going. A night fever, night fever. We change our arms, yes. Lower strings are really cool. The coolest ever. Okay, we're gonna flick our fingers. Like we've got some sort of, I don't know, like a spilt Ribena on them. Flick them out. Mm -mm. We're gonna flick these fingers out, just warming everything up. Flick them up. Okay, now we're gonna just do some A-OK -okay signs. It's going to be really useful for when we're holding our bow, playing on our cellos and basses. Okay, and one last thing to get really zen and in the mood. Just your shoulders. I want you to kind of go up with the shoulders. And relax. And relax. Okay, so I think we're all warmed up. We're going to go over various techniques, but as I said, at the end of this half hour, hit me up with some questions and I'm going to answer them. Um, if you can ask me questions about technical tips for lower strings, that would be really good. Uh, did everyone see David's last half hour? That was really good. I'm probably going to steal most of his ideas. <laughs> so let's go and get our cellos or our basses or our lower stringed ilked instruments. Okay, mine's just here, so I'm just, just going to go here and get it. move into short back on the telly <laughs> not the telly not at all okay so we've got our instruments now remember we had our feet grounded someone once said to me it's like when you sit down with an instrument you have these golden threads rising up through your head and then back down through your feet going all the way to the center of the earth to the center of the planet. 
there are some excellent films out there about that very thing. But if you can imagine this line, and we're just going to sit down as if we've got this really neat golden threads all the way down. Okay, I'm bringing the instrument to you. And for us bass players, we tend to have a knee up on one side, but chalice should be pretty much central. So, technical stuff. Here we go. I'm actually going to start with the bow. So, get our floppy hand and flop it over. And make sure that this is our dream bow hold. Okay? Our thumb should be really relaxed at the back. I'm really bent. And if I do a close up, can you see here? Bent. Sometimes it can be really stressful. Oh, we do that, but we don't want to do that because that really hurt. Really hurt. Keep it nice and bent and relaxed. Any German boat holders out there, welcome, welcome. So you're going to be super relaxed, but from the underarm position. Super relaxed, your wrist should be feeling really relaxed. Okay, so we've got this beautiful bow hold. It looks great out there, fabulous. And I just want you to, without making a noise, put it on top of the bridge. I might just be out of shot with my bridge, but on top of the bridge, just rock it. Now, as you're rocking it, I want you to imagine that your first finger is in charge this very second. Now I want you to imagine that your second finger is in charge. Now your third finger's in charge. Keep rocking. And now your little finger, which is a weird one to be in charge. But it's just gonna, you're gonna be aware of that one there. Okay, now we're gonna move up, halfway up the strings. Do the same thing. You're probably getting like a slightly crunchy noise. That's good. I like that. That means you've got a good center on the instrument, center with the bow to the string, and your weight through your arm is amazing. So that's good. We can hear a kind of noise. Can you hear my bass? Maybe. Okay, and then to the edge of the fingerboard, to the edge of the dark zone. And the same thing. Think about your first finger, your second finger, your third finger. Which one is in charge? Whenever you want it to be in charge, you're in control. Your little finger, your thumb is always relaxed and bent. It's not pinching anything, okay? It is a piece of wood, don't scrunch it up. Okay, rocking backwards and forwards. Right, we're gonna play. Here we go. We're gonna just do our open strings. Now for cellos, it'll sound different to what I'm doing. Don't be put off. Just get involved and do it. We're going to start on an up bow. We're going to start at the tip on our low string. We're going to need to divide the up bow into fours. One, two, three, four. Okay. Each open string is going to get a quarter of this bow. This exercise is for, you say, oh, open strings, that's so dull. Oh, it sort of, if you think of it like that, perhaps, after all, we need technique and we need to be able to articulate ourselves in music and tell stories. It's a bit like having a mouth with no teeth and trying to tell a story like this. We don't understand anything I say with one bit, right? So we need the technical stuff. We need to practice dividing up the bow. We need to practice our weight distribution. And open strings is a beautiful place to start. So we're going to do it now, but we're going to start with the tip from here. I bet you, if you spent the rest of the day talking to your family without your teeth, you'll have a brilliant time. You probably won't understand anything anyone's saying, but you'll have a laugh. Try it. Okay, so we're going to go from here, low string up to the up string, and then come back down. Whilst you're doing this, and you're dividing the bow up perfectly into fours, like a true scientist mathematician, Tell me which way your bow is going. Is it going in a rainbow way? Or is it going in a dish sort of movement? Think about it. Here we go. The other thing to remember is if you're thinking about it, is it going in a rainbow 
or is it going in a dish? Which one do you think at home? I'm pretty sure I know which one. Have a think about it. The other thing to think about is the sound. Is it scratchy or is it smooth? If it's scratchy, do something different. So change the weight, change the speed, or change the point of contact of your bow to change that sound. If it's smooth and you want it to sound scratchy, do the same thing. We're going to do the same thing. Start at the tip. Let me know. Do you think it's a rainbow or a dish? Here we go. Okay, so for my eyes, it was indeed a rainbow. And I hope we're all having a really good go at that at home. Now we're going to do the dish. And each time we do the rainbow or we do the dish, we're thinking about the movement of our arm and our elbows. And for us bigger player instruments, bigger play, for us who play bigger instruments, we actually have to do a bit of movement to reach our top string. It's quite a long way away. So if you do feel yourself coming round, that's good. We come round with our bodies to get to the top strings, okay? Right, let's do the dish. So this time I'm going to start on a down bow on the lowest string. Here we go, and... relaxing exercise. Whilst we've got the bow and we're doing these nice movements with the bow, another really gorgeous exercise I like doing is drawing circles around fingers. Can everyone do that? How about my entire hand? Keep control of it using your thumb and your first finger. Uh, can you see my wrist if I get by the hair of it? It's quite difficult. There we go. Point it forward and do a little figure of eight. And the whole time you're using your first, this finger, your first finger to control it. Can you see that? Can you all do that at home? Grab your, grab anything. Parents, you don't play a cello. Disaster, no. Pick up a pencil. Give it a go. I'm now going to write my name. Alice Kent. Okay, really good exercise. Either going round your hand here or writing a name in the air. And it flexes all of these muscles here. And your whole time, this finger is a heck of a lot in control here. Okay, and the whole time my thumb behind, super relaxed. I'm not pushing against the wood. Okay, all right, we're gonna add some notes. I was thinking about this long and hard. Woo. Do we do a scale? I was like, obviously, do a scale. I love scales. G major is my favorite, so we're gonna do that. But I have got a tune for you, so don't switch it off. Hang in there. If you really hate scales that much, I'll move on, and I've got a good one for you. But first, we're gonna do G major. So, everyone, G major is everyone's favorite. Here we go, G major scale. We're just gonna play it however you like. major really don't panic just play some open strings but join in here we go down down up down up now we're going to speed it up so we're going to go down 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 up See what happens. Here we go. And try using the whole bow. Are you getting through the whole bow? I think you probably are. We're 
We're going to do similar again, but this is super tricky now. We're going to go first note at the heel, and we're going to use about a centimetre of bow. Can we make a sound with that much bow? We're about to find out. Then the next note, we're going to go to the opposite end of the bow and use a centimetre. It's about that much. Let's see what happens. So it's going to go like this. Down. Up. Down. Etc. Here we go. I go a bit quicker than that. It might take a while otherwise. Here we go. Uh, down. Up. Down. At the tip. At the heel. At the tip. At the heel. At the tip. At the heel for the intro. Oh, gosh, what a lot of effort. But I bet you sound good. Woo! Fantastic. We could do so much with a scale. I could go on and on and on and on and on and on, but I'm aware that G major might be coming a little bit boring maybe for some of you. I would urge you at home, if you find it getting boring, just play a different scale, why not? But for those of you who really, really have a thing against them, I know some of my pupils do, we're gonna play the cha-cha-cha. Yes, about time, half past three on a Saturday, it's about time someone did the cha-cha-cha, right? Okay, so my cha-cha-cha goes like this, if I can remember how I was going to do it, uh, it's going to go E, D, E, cha-cha-cha. If you're a cello, you could go down to your open G if you like, or even if you're feeling like you don't want to play your open G as a bass player, play your lower G here. Okay, we're going to do that all together, you ready? One, two, cha-cha-cha, and... cha-cha using our bow more um, we're gonna go down down up 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 something like that we're gonna join them in twos and fours mix it up at home let's see what happens here we go and then I'm gonna make it really hard. So we're gonna do the whole of cha-cha-cha in one bow. Oh, someone's missed the start. Don't worry about it. You can re-watch it. After this has ended, just go back to the beginning. Don't worry, we do some really good warm-ups and you can just go back on it. So we're now gonna do the whole of the cha-cha-cha in one bow. Good luck. I've only practiced this once today, so who knows what's gonna happen. Here we go, and... Did we manage it? Let's do it again. Oh gosh. Oh, I didn't manage it. Did you manage it at home? Did you? You did, didn't you? Ha <laughs> ha It's really good. Okay, so I want to have another little think about our left hand. We haven't talked much about our left hand. I'm aware, actually. We're counting down, it's like, oh, I need to leave time for questions. If anyone's got questions, put them up here. I need to, I need to keep an eye on questions. And it, there's almost certainly a myriad, that's a good word, of things that I've left out. So ask me questions and I'm gonna try and get to them imminently. Okay, but first of all, I just want us lower strings to get these fingers warming up. Nikki does this fantastic exercise for violins and I quite like it where she just flops all four fingers onto the instrument. And this could be really good for us because us advanced lower stringers, at some point we might reach that point in life, in, in our playing life, where we just have to know where notes are. So 
you need to practice, but it's there. I'm pretty sure this is going to be an E. It is. God, that's close. That could have been disastrous. But everyone, just get their instruments and flop all four fingers onto the bass or the cello. Lovely cellist. Lovely cellist. Now, I want you to see, and I think even David did this game, see if you can pick a note that matches one of your open strings. I'm going to go for the D this time. When I say go, you're going to just flop your hand into that position and hopefully you'll play a D or a G or an A or a C or an E or whatever you like. And we'll check it with our open string. Ready? Go! Oh gosh, is this a D? That was a D for me. How do you fare at home? It's a really good game. Another really good game is when we play, a lot of people call this the puking game, which I think is just maybe not quite the most glamorous of techniques, uh, but the glissando game is a good one. Um, let's start on an E on our D strings, everybody. And we're just gonna glissando the octave. This gets this moving gets this moving and together they're moving and it's fabulous exercise that. Okay, let me just check my notes. I've got some things I really want to cover and I'm just dawdling on the really fun ones. Ah, oh, one that I think is super important is for us at Advanced guys, especially if we were chatting to one Advanced bass player yesterday in the Zoom sectional. It may be you've reached a point where you're leading your section. How do you lead your section um, and technically there are all sorts of things. I mean, some people do this, you know, massive gesture of, ah, obviously you can't go now, you can't do that. But we could breathe like this. So everyone, let's play uh, a nice double stop of Ds and Gs, my favorite notes today. We're gonna play them together. And now I want you to imagine you are leading in your section an army of lower string players. Gosh, wouldn't that be amazing? So, I've got, I've got my army behind me. How am I going to let you know when to play? We're going to breathe. Here we go. So, you'll notice that I'll sort of breathe in a tempo even, which is very similar to what conductors do. All right, we'll give that one one more go. This is a really good technique. It also gets you thinking about your own breath because let's face it, if you didn't, you'd fall over. Okay, and oh, breathe, okay. And again. Oh, beautiful. You notice I picked a double stop. We could have picked a singular note, but a double stop is quite a tricky thing in itself. <laughs> it's like technical tips rolling into technical tips, you know? So with two strings, what do we have to think about? We have to doubly think about what our bow is doing. It needs to be on both strings at the same time. We have to have contact at the same time. We have to have a good amount of weight. Don't shy away from a double stop. Oh my goodness, it's the scariest thing to play it with. Yeah, the air is quite as vulnerable, isn't it? It's much safer just to... In fact, everyone give that a go. Oof! And especially if you're a cellist, you can add notes and create your own gorgeous chords. Make that your little exercise for tonight, maybe. Coming up with a crazy double stop. Now, I'm aware I'm running out of time. I've got four minutes. A couple of other things I wanted to cover, but maybe there'll be questions about it. So I'm going to look and see if there are any questions. Um... Oh, false finger of vibrato. It's that question that keeps giving, isn't it? So we had this question yesterday, and um, I, I vibrato is such a tricky thing, isn't it? Such a tricky thing. My fourth finger, I, bass players a lot have this really cool thing that their fourth finger is kind of fatter than their other, their bowing fourth finger. Maybe I'll give you a close-up later, and you're, it's a bit of a quirky thing, but it's sort of fatter with every bass player and cellist, that their pads are kind of bigger on their right hand. Anyway, I, I digress. When we do vibrato, 
I um, learnt very, very recently of Stuart Wilson about Ruth Beecham's book about an idea about vibrato where we all polish our string. Polish, in fact, polish on your D string because we're going to end up on an F sharp. And we're going to polish like this. We're going to keep polishing. It's going to be really clean our instruments, aren't they? Also feels a little bit like I'm starting a small choir. Anyway, we're going to gradually polish, 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 and our thumb is going to get stuck in some jam. Okay, it's stuck, but I'm still going to polish. And now with your fourth finger, okay, and you do the same exercise and add the bow. Now the other thing that you, if you're going to be really particular about vibrato is another exercise where you can change the movement. I'm trying to exaggerate so you can really hear it. I'm trying to do it in a slow rhythm. mixture of honing in really fleshy part of your fingers on the strings and then maybe even trying in different rhythms and this also helps if you can do that great exercise of tapping your head and rubbing your tummy if you can do that you can move the bow and do this vibrato exercise really well um, and that's something you can take away from the bass. So at dinner time, when you start doing that exercise, it's totally a valid excuse to go, I'm sorry I paused to eat my dinner. I am practicing my vibrato by tapping my head and rubbing my tummy. Okay, are there any other questions? Shifting in fast passages. Shifting in fast passages. Right, well, first off, I would go really slowly. So, I did a little shift then. If we di dissect it like scientists, we're going to do it really, really slowly. The best way to practice anything is to do it incredibly slowly so that we know we can manage a shift. If we can play it slowly, we can definitely play it quickly over time, building up the speed. So with a shift, and actually it's harder for us lower stringies on the lower strings. So I'm going to do a shift in the middle, so I'm going to go G, A flat. I'm going to go really slowly. Make sure that that is spot on. Then we speed it up. You might even want to change your bow and make it separate. you're doing a slow it's probably easier than separate bows and over a long passage if we've got a fast but there's lots of noty bits absolutely maybe even take your right hand out of the equation and go really slowly look at every shift and make sure that every time it's going to be accurate and in tune and just do that thing where you you play but you don't use the bow and you can kind of hear the note Make sure you're 100% of your fingering but slow and then build it up use a metronome for this uh, and maybe don't I really love quirky metronomes so go on YouTube or something and come up with a really cool metronome to just quirk it up a bit um, and you could even change the rhythms of the passage to kind of see if even a rhythm changing thing puts you off kilter oh my god I've nearly run out of time have I actually run out of time blimey uh, I'm going to check if the, I'm going to take one more question, if there is one, or maybe there's not. <gasps> maybe I've covered everything. Yes, this was for cello as well. Yes. Uh, hi, Abby. Hi, Ellen. Yes, you're cool. Um, loads of people, lovely people watching. Um, I think that's about it. The only thing I was going to quickly mention are harmonics because. Us bass players find them as a slightly tricky thing, a little bit frustrating. Uh, if you play a harmonic, and we can all play harmonics on the half strings, use these strings here, so it would be um, an A on your
a top string for cellos or a G for us. Quirky thing for harmonics, more bow closer to the bridge, whip it through and you'll absolutely make a nice sound. Guess what? If you play your G and do this, guess what? It doesn't work. Like that. Um, you're all amazing. Enjoy making music. And remember, if we don't have some technical aspects in place, it's like not having tape. And we'll have to speak to each other like this for the rest of the day. Um, I think there's a chat coming up at four with Nikki and friends. Watch it. There's so much stuff happening. Dip in and out. Watch it all. You're all amazing. And I so hope to see you in real life soon. Mwah! Thank <sniffs> you.